Shammai, Yasharala, Yahawa, Alahayanawa, Yahawa, Akhan, Shammai, Yasharala, Yahawa, Alahayanawa, Yahawa, Akhan, Shammai, Yasharala, Yahawa, Alahayanawa, Yahawa, Akhan. All right, Shalom, Shalom. Before I get started with this lesson, I want to give all honor, praise, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. Double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone that taught me this truth and that rule well. And peace and salutation to the elect that's out here laboring in all sincerity and truth. All right. This is the brother Amwan Ariya from GMS Charlotte. Coming back with another lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. And pretty much in this lesson, I want to do a response video to the elder Manatazat by his, uh, his video going into the, how he was destroying, you know, Gino Jennings' mixed theory, you know, madness, man. All right. I just wanted to, you know, add my two cents. All right. And I'm going to be using some of the scriptures the elder brought out. But, you know, I said, I just want to, you know, just add my spiritual two cents to the matter. All right. So before I play the video, I'm going to start out here in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 40, uh, 14 and 33. It says, For Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai is not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all churches of the saints. Okay? All right. The scriptures say that the Lord is not the author of confusion. Okay? And when you, you know, uh, when you understand this truth, okay, Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, has made everything plain. All right. Scriptures say that the Lord has made this truth plain to the holy and the stumbling block to the wicked, roughly paraphrasing, man. All right. So it's not hard to, to realize, you know, when the when hey when we go into the scriptures and we break down pretty much the chosen seed line, man. All right. These people in the world want to overcomplicate these things because really what it's coming down to is they're trying to make a loophole for really just for Esau, man. Because you don't see our people or nobody else trying to make a loophole for any other nation on the earth except for the so-called white man, okay? So let's just keep it straight, man, all right? And what you're about to listen to with this convoluted, you know, breakdown that this dude is about to say... All right. It sounds utterly stupid, man. OK. And anybody with common sense can pretty much, you know, uh, uh, listen to this and hear that is madness, man. All right. So let's just go ahead. To all black historians who have any knowledge of slavery, according to history, People of color was kidnapped from Africa, brought to Europe and also to America, sold like livestock. And whatever bigot purchased you, he purchased you with the attitude you was nothing but like a horse, an ox. You were property. To identify his property, he or she took the name of its master. I want you to follow me good. Then your enslaved master took your mama, your sister, your daughter, and had unlawful sex with them at will. So then the children that was born on that plantation, if Mr. Harris was the slave master, then all slaves took on Harris' name. But when White Harris laid with the black woman and a child came forth, the child was mixed blood. 
I want you to follow me. Black and white mixed blood. And this went on for years and years. Down to you, to the purple gang. Which one of you black men is pure black? And if you are a product of descendants from slaves in which we are, then there is white blood in your black body. So if the black man have no chance of being saved, then what part of you is going to hell? Because there's a whiteness in you that that will make some part of your DNA, some part of you is got to go to hell according to what you believe. If whites have no chance to be saved, and you trace your tree back to a plantation. Your black face with white blood. So, tell me how God going to do this. Is he going to take the white part out of you and send it to hell? And then the black part he's going to take into heaven? You said God is all black because the Bible said his hair is like wool. All right? <clears throat> all right, you heard that desperate speech. Man. <laughs> like I said, there's so much to unpack on that bullshit, man. But at the end of the day, we're just going to deal with the mixed blood part. All right, because... According to the Bible, man, there's no such thing as mixed blood or a mixed person, man. All right. So before we go into this, let's go ahead and set some uh, parameters, man. All right. This is Isaiah chapter eight, verse 20. It reads to the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word. It is because there is no light in them. All right. So as you as you can always, you know, see with these preachers, man, these these church pastors, these Christians, period. They never speak according to the scriptures, man. All right. It's always, you know, just a long, convoluted, you know, speech that's saying a bunch of nothing, man. All right. And that's exactly what that that whole speech was, man. A bunch of nothing, all right? Because nothing that he said, you could bring a precept out to prove it. Because like I said, there's no such thing as mixed blood, man. Because you are who your father is, man. All right? So at the end of the day, man, there's no light in Geno Jennings or any of you Christians, okay? Because you speak not according to this word. You speak from your own heart, man. All right? Which the scriptures say, man, hey, the heart is deceitfully wicked above all things, man. All right? And and an evil suspicion has overthrown your judgment, man. So yo, you know, your thoughts are, are, are polluted because you you don't you don't go according to the scriptures, man. So there's no light in you, man. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, and tackle this this subject that this dude is trying to come with, man. Okay, so like I said, there's no such thing as mixed seed because all right you are what your father is man this is numbers numbers chapter 1 verse 18 and they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month and they declared their pedigrees after their families by the house of their fathers according to the number of the names from 20 years old and upward by their poles right so when you read about how the, uh, you know, how the Israelites, you know, determine, all right, the pedigree, man, okay, 
and their pedigree is their ancestry, all right, their you know, their genealogy. Ultimately, man, they they when they referred uh, to each other, all right, we didn't have last names back then, man. All right. If your name, I'll give you an example, you know, your name was uh <clears throat> I say Gad, all right? You, you're from the tribe of Gad, so it would be Gad, Bon Gad. So you you are Gad, the son of Gad, all right? You were the son of your father, man, okay? That's how they would know you, all right? And that's always been the case all throughout, you know, the uh, the history, man, okay? That never switched up, man, okay? So if your father is a so-called Negro, it doesn't matter on the plantation that if your uh your wife got got raped by the slave master and she got pregnant by him and brought forth babies man those those damn babies were Edomite babies man all right just because they have black skin does not make them a a so-called black person man all right so all the slaves <clears throat> that were on the plantation that were fathered by a so-called black man all right those children are so-called black men, but if they got pregnant by the slave master, a so-called white man, okay, then they are uh, they are an Edomite man, all right. Unless that so-called white man, all right, his father went back to a uh, Israelite man, okay. But at the end of the day, you are what your father is, man, all right. Because like I said, man, the 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 seed comes from the father, man, all right. And that genealogy, just to give you an example, <clears throat> all right, is is the records of your father's father, father, father going, you know, back to the beginning, man. But this is just to give you an example, all right, in the book of Matthew, chapter 1, verse 1. It says, this is the genealogy of Yahweh Shai, the Messiah. Okay, it says the book of the generation of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Okay, it says Abraham begot Isaac, and Isaac begot Jacob, and Jacob begot Judas and his brethren, and Judas begot Fer Perez and Zara and Tom and Tamar, and Perez begot Esram, and Esram begot Aram. And when you read all the way down, going jumping down to verse 16, it says, And Jacob begat Joseph, the, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Yahabashai, who is called Hamashiach. Okay? So Yahabashai's lineage was listed, all right, of who he went back to, man. All right? Which shows you, which is a whole other topic, but there was no such thing as no virgin birth, man, all right? When Yahweh Shai came into the earth, his last final time and that his last incarnation, he came through the seed of Joseph, all right, who Joseph was a descendant of King David, man, all right? Who King David came out of the, out of the seed of Jacob, all right? So you see how the father, it, 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 the, the tribe always, you know, I say the tribe, Slaki, the, the seed always came from the father, man. You notice there's no mothers being uh, 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 listed of what they come from, man, okay? Because according to the mixed theory, okay, you are what your mother, what your father and your mother are, man, all right? Your, the mother has nothing to do with the lineage, all right? Because at the end of the day, the father is the one who carries the seed, who carries the the, uh, the genealogy, man. All right? So at the end of the day, when it comes to this whole uh, uh, this whole thing that he, Geno Jennings, is trying to push with this mixed blood mess, all right? He's trying to, you know, just go into it based off skin color, all right? And it's not, th this truth is not a skin color thing, man. All right? Because... Hey, at the end of the day, it, it, it's based off your spirit. Okay? Let me get that real quick. This is the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 16, and it reads, The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit 
that we are the children of the most high, right? Because it's Israelites that scattered throughout the whole earth, okay, who who have, you know, taken on the appearance of the other nations, but whose genealogy, whose, you know, seed uh their their uh their ancestry goes back unto the Israelites, man. All right. So it doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter what land that you were uh, you were brought up in, okay? If you're a so-called black man and you were born in China, you're still a so-called black man, all right? If you're a so-called white man who laid down with a so-called black woman, Arab woman, African woman, Chinese woman, East Indian woman, doesn't matter how that seed comes out. It's still... An Edomite according to the spirit, okay? Because like we said, man, the seed is what, you know, uh, the seed of your father is what you go back to, man. All right? You can't change that no matter the appearance, man. All right? But dealing with the Israelites, man, okay, Jake is going to come out looking like all nations, but the spirit of that Israelite is still an Israelite, man, Okay? This is Jeremiah 12 and 9, and it reads, My inheritance is unto me as a speckled bird. The birds round about are against her. Come ye assemble all the beasts of the field. Come to devour. Okay? The scriptures say that our heritage is as a speckled bird, man. Okay, let's go into this word speckled. All right, let's see. Yeah, so this is the uh, HGG41. It says colored, variegated, speckled. Let's see what variegated means. Variegation is the appearance of differently colored zones in the leaves and sometimes the stems of fruits. Specifically, species with variegated individuals are sometimes found in the other at the end of the day, it's saying, you know, the different different colors, different shades, you know, you could use as that. All right, so let me go back. All right. The blue letter is tripping. Salakia, give me one second. All right, so as it says back in Jeremiah chapter 12, verse 9, it says, My inheritance is unto me as a speckled bird. The birds round about, bound round about are against her. Come ye, assemble all the beasts of the field, come to devour. Because like I said, our people have been scattered throughout the whole world. All right? And amongst these different lands, our people have been scattered. Okay? Our people have laid down with the different nations of the earth and, and produce children with those women. And over the years of, you know, that process, you know, replaying itself out over and over again, they have fully taken on the appearance of the of the different heathen, man. But like I said, the, the difference being, all right, that even though they look like the heathen, spiritually, they are still Israelites, man. All right, and that's the point. And, and how can we tell? Because as we just read in Romans 8 and 16, it says the spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of the most high, man. Okay? Because they, their spirits, if they're of the elect, well, really, if they're an Israelite or not, man, they are they are spiritually connected to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai in these scriptures, whether they believe or not, man. All right? Uh, the Israelites hold themselves in a different, in a different, uh, uh, a different way than the rest of the heathen, okay? Which proved that they that they have to be Israelites, man. All right? It's just a certain way they carry themselves, man. But the Lord is dealing with seed lines, man. All right? And when it comes to the seed line, man, the seed line cannot be mixed, okay? It's pure because it's coming from the Father, man. All right? So let's give another example. Because what you're trying to do with bringing in this, this uh, this false doctrine, all right, 
is you're trying to make a loophole for the other nations to pretty much get into, all right? But like I said, the main one that you're trying to, you know, uh, allow a loophole to get in is the so-called white man, Esau, man. All right, because like I said, our people don't put up a fight for no other nation but Esau. You don't see them do. You don't see them trying to, you know, make a way for Ham, Moab, Ishmael, nobody. It's just Esau, man. All right, but at the end of the day, the Lord chose Israel, and to this day, all right, the Lord never changed, man. All right, scriptures say, matter of fact, let me get that real quick. Malachi 3 and 6, it says, For I, the Lord, it's like if I am the Lord, Yahweh Shai, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. See, right here. All right, it says the sons of Jacob. All right, because the sons of Jacob come out of the seed of Jacob, which means that they're still sons of Jacob. They are pure. That seed line is still uh, left pure. All right, to show you that they come from Jacob, whose name was later changed to Israel, man. All right, but the Lord never changed, man. Okay, so he's still, all right, with Israel to this day, man. All right. Now, he's going to destroy two-thirds on this side, but nonetheless, man, two-thirds are going to be reborn in the kingdom, all right, as kings and priests, man. Okay? And no matter what Esau tries to do, Esau, you're still damned, so it doesn't matter if you if you take all the black women on the earth, you take all the so-called black, uh, Latino, or Native American women, all right, you label all of them at the end of the day, that will never make you an Israelite, man, okay? Because your seed still going to be a, a Edomite, man, all right? So this is Jeremiah 31 and 35. It reads, Thus saith the Lord, which gives the sun for a light by day. And the ordinances of the moon and of the stars for a light by night, which divided the sea when the waves thereof roar. The Lord of hosts is his name. If those ordinances depart from me, it's like you book from before me, save Yahweh Shai, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. All right, and we still have the, the the sun, the moon, the stars, okay? And that's proof that the Lord never did away with Israel, man. All right, he never changed his covenant, all right? Everything is still promised unto Israel, man. The Lord never changed that, man, okay? Verse 37, thus saith the Lord, if heaven above can be measured and the foundations of the earth searched out beneath, I will also cast off. It's like I will, yeah, I will also cast off all the seed of Israel for all that they have done, say of the Lord. Okay. And Esau, he's he's secretly trying to do this, man. All right. But the pro the problem with that is at the Lord, uh, he he was joint, he was uh messing with you, man. All right, because you will never be able to measure out the heavens, man. You will never be able to search out all right the depths of the ocean, man. Because the scriptures say what, man? Let me get that real quick. Job 14 and 5, it says, seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee, thou hast appointed his bounds that he cannot pass right. And see, so you Edomites, man, all right, specifically talking about you elites, okay, you are trying to bypass prophecy because the, the scriptures tell you, all right, that your end is destruction after a thousand uh, years of slavery, man. All right, so these devils are trying to offset prophecy by trying to find a way to make the make the Lord disannul his covenant with Israel, man. But you're not going to be able to do it because, like I said, scriptures just say it, man. All right, the Lord has appointed you bound that you cannot pass, man. This is why back in this Jeremiah 31 and 37, okay, you can't measure out the heavens. You can't you can't measure the depths of the earth, man. All right. You have a uh, you have a limit that the Lord was going to allow you to go, all right? Because like I said, man, the Lord never changed it up to where the Lord was going to be able to pretty much disannul 
his covenant with, with, uh, with Israel. Why? Because the Lord promised Abraham back in Genesis, man. All right. This is the book of Genesis 22 and 15. It says, And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, By myself have I sworn, save the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in the multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven. And as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. See, and the Lord, hey, he, he, he said that once his word, you know, goes out of his mouth, it's not going to come back to, unto him void, man. And the Lord is not one to break promises. But see, Esau tries to play on this, all right, and say, well, you know, well, we all come from Abraham, but no, Abraham had a chosen seed. All right, out of his uh, out of his uh his seed line, man. Okay, let's go into that. All right, this is the book. Of Second Edris chapter three, and I started thirteen. The point is in um, sixteen. It says, "Now when they lived so wickedly before thee, thou didst choose thee a man from among them, whose name was Abraham. Him thou lovest, and unto him only thou showedest thy will." All right, yeah, because Abraham. All right. He was, you know, personally, you know, picked by Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah, all right, out of, you know, uh, uh, the sons of, uh, the sons of Adam, all right, or the sons of God, okay, then the Lord personally dealt with him, man, okay, now he called him out of his own house, man, because, hey, Abraham's father, okay, when they was in the land of, uh, was it Ur, or Chaldees, I believe, that his own father was an idol worshiper, man. Okay, but the Lord had called Abraham, all right, whose name at, at that point was called uh, Abram and later changed to Abraham. All right. The Lord called him out and had him go to a land that he'd never been before. All right. And pretty much he, he tested Abraham, but Abraham showed through his faith. All right. That he believed in Yahweh by Shem Yahweh and the Lord rewarded him by an establishing a covenant with him, man. Okay. Hey, Abra he told Abraham to, to sacrifice his only son, Isaac, all right? And hey, Abraham's about to do it. But then hey, the Lord had an angel, you know, stop him before he did it, you know, to prove his faith. So all that, all, I'm saying all this to lead up to this is why Abraham was blessed, man, okay? So verse 14 says, Him thou lovest, and unto him only thou show thy will. And made an everlasting covenant with him, promising him that thou wouldest never forsake his seed. And you see how it keeps reiterating on on this seed, okay? All right, his his seed line. But out of that seed line, it's, it's going to be a chosen seed line. And unto him thou gavest Isaac, and unto Isaac also thou gavest Jacob and Esau, okay? And you see how is 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 focusing. On the chosen seed line, man. All right, because it out of Isaac, it's like out of Abraham's seed, you had Isaac and Ishmael. Like I said, you don't see Jake fighting for Ishmael, man. Okay, with Ishmael, he's not chosen either, man. All right, let me get that real quick just for uh edification's sake, man. All right, I'm just going to read right through it. This is Romans chapter uh, 9, verse 1. I say the truth in Hamashiach, I lie not. My conscience also bear me witness in the Holy Spirit 
that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart, for I could wish that myself were a curse from Hamashiach, for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, okay, because a hey, Paul was an Israelite, man, all right? So the only way that you can be an Israelite if you come from the seed of an Israelite, man, all right? You're an Israelite by blood, okay? There's no such thing as a spiritual Israelite, man, okay? That word kinsman, matter of fact, let me get that, see what that say, man. You know, like I say, we're just going through this for edification, okay? It says, of the same kin, a kin related by blood, that pure seed that came from the father, okay? Esau, he's not, he's not uh, uh, related to uh, uh, to the twelve tribes as far as you know from that, okay? Because the twelve tribes come from Jacob, not Esau, okay? Because a hey, technically, when you look at it, all right, Esau is, is the twelve tribes' uncle. <laughs> when you want to look at it like that, but at the end of the day, you weren't chosen, anyways. Verse 4, who are Israelites to whom pertain of the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of Yahweh and the promises who are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh Hamashiach came who is over all God blessed forever Amun. Okay. Continuing on, not as though the word of, because pretty much what this said, man, the, the promises, the covenant, the adoption, all that was, was only given unto the Israelites, no other nation, man, okay? Verse 6, not as though the word of Hamashiach, it's like the word of Yahweh Shem Yahushai have taken none effect, for they are not all Israel which are Israel, because on this side right now, two-thirds of the nation of Israel are classified as spiritual heathen because you are in a heathenistic state of mind, man. Okay? So you're not considered Israelites on this side, man. All right? All right? By blood, physically, you are Israelites, but spiritually, you are not Israelites, man. Okay? Because you want to take on the mindset of a heathen. Okay? But you will know that you are an Israelite, all right, in the kingdom of heaven after you're uh, put to death on this side when you're reborn in your right mind, man. Okay? Then we will accept you, you know, as our brothers and our sisters, man. Okay, but until now, two thirds of our people, all right, you you are looked at as as heathen, man. Verse seven, neither because they are the seed of Abraham, are they all children, but in Isaac, shall they shall I see be called right? It says just because you're the seed of Abraham, that doesn't mean that you're all children, man. Okay, because at the end of the day. Isaac was the chosen seed line, man. Okay, because Abraham had other other sons outside of uh, outside of Isaac, but Isaac was the chosen son, man. It says that is they which are the children of the flesh; these are not the children of the Most High, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. Yeah, because the children of the flesh. All right, that goes. That's going into Ishmael, man. All right, the 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 children are the child of the bondwoman. All right, but we're the children, we're the child of the, uh, of the free woman, which was Sarah, man. All right. Verse nine: For this is the word of promise: At that time will I come, and Sarah shall have a son. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our, it's like even by our father Isaac, for the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil that the purpose of God according to the election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. It was said unto her, the elders shall serve the younger. So the chosen seed line was already established before Jacob or Esau was even born. All right. The Lord already had that established from the beginning, man. All right. Verse 13, as it was written, it's like, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. So Esau was rejected from the jump, all right? 
The Lord only loves Jacob, man. Okay? So going back, 2nd Ezra chapter 13, verse 16. It says, Unto him thou gavest Isaac, and unto Isaac also thou gavest Jacob and Esau. As for Jacob, thou didst choose him to thee, and put by Esau, and so Jacob became a great multitude. So the seed of Jacob is that seed that was blessed, man. All right. Not Esau. All right. So this is why I'm saying, man, they, the, the seed line has been made. It, 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 it's still pure. OK, if you come out of the line of a so-called Negro, Latino and Native American. OK, you are still an Israelite, man. All right. See what this what this mixed blood mixed seed bullshit is trying to do is bring forth confusion. But the scripture say that the Lord is not the author of confusion, man. Okay, hey, because at the end of the day, man, the, the the seed of Jacob, all right, has been blessed. The seed of Abraham, which is going through the line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, man, is blessed, man, and and we see that now because as it said, man, the seed of Jacob will become. A great multitude, right? Let's get that real quick. This is the book of Isaiah 10 and 22. For though thy people Israel be as the sand of the sea, yet a remnant of them shall return. The consumption decreed shall overflow with righteousness, right? All right, because hey, Israel was the biggest nation on the planet, man. All right. And hey, scriptures say that hey, we're the sand of the sea, man. You can't count the sand of the sea, man. And hey, you grab a grain, you, you grab a handful of sand. It's impossible to count the grains of sand that you uh, you got in your hand, man. All right. And that's that's the equivalent of how Israel is in the earth, man. All right. It's billions of Israelites on the planet right now, whether they look like a so-called Negro Native American or not. Their seed line still goes back to Israel, whether they know it or not, man. Okay? So it doesn't matter how they look, all right? Hey, the, you got you got Israelites over in the land of uh, 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 Sicily, Italy, that look like so-called white people, but their seed line goes back to the Israelites, man. Because guess what? We occupied that land at one point in time in history, all right? Specifically, uh, uh, the Moors, man. Who go back to the Israelites, man? Who some of them knew they were Israelites still, man. Even though a lot of them converted to Islam, they still knew that they were Israelites, though, man. Okay, hey, in England, all right, Scotland, all right, hey, all throughout the world, Germany, China, hey, we were everywhere, man. So it's Israelites scattered all throughout the world, man. All right, real quick, just to prove that. James 1 and 1, James, a servant of God, of Yahweh, and of the Lord, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. We are scattered all throughout the world, man. But it doesn't matter what you look like, because at the end of the day, the Lord is coming back to save Israel, man. All right? And like I said, man, hey, our, our people, all right, we have been intermingled amongst the, the heathen, but spiritually... The seed shows forth that they are Israelites, man. All right? So at the end of the day, man, no matter what you damn, you Christians, or you two-third, you know, Jake out here trying to do, you're not, you're not going to be able to make a loophole for Esau to get up in there, man. Okay? Because at the end of the day, man, the Lord told you that, man, hey, he was only going to save Israel, man. All right? There's no salvation for any other nation, man. Okay? Get this real quick. This is the book of Isaiah 59 and 21. As for me, this is my covenant with them, save the Lord. My spirit that is upon thee and my words which I have put in thy mouth shall not depart out of the out of thy mouth, nor out of the, the mouth of thy seed, nor out of thy out of the mouth of thy of thy seed seed, save the Lord for henceforth and forevermore. Right. 
because at the end of the day, man, this 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 word this is it is endowed in our spirit. All right, and over the generations, man. Okay, the Lord never stopped dealing with Israel, man. All right, now people they they are lost. Okay, they 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 have you know forgotten the Lord, but spiritually we're still connected to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh. That's how, and no matter what Israelite you know looks like, what nation, man. And when they hear this word, you can tell an uh, Israelite when you see. It. That's why scriptures tell you to try the spirit by the spirit, man. All right, and you can see. If that if that man or woman has the spirit of an Israelite or not, man. All right, nine times out of ten, if they you know are jiving with it, or even if they don't, man, you could you, they can still give off the characteristics of an Israelite, man. Cause you hey, you know a nigga when they start to buck up, you can tell versus a damn a heathen, man. All right, cause our people have spirit, man. All right, they have uh some some flavor about themselves, man. All right, so at the end of the day. It's not about no damn seed line, man. All right? I mean, Slocky, not, not no seed line. It's not about no uh, mixed blood. You know, Slocky, the slip of the tongue. All right? Let me get another point to show you. It's it, it's all the spirit, man. All right? I know it's in Romans, too. I'm trying to figure out where it's at. Romans 2 and 12, I believe. For as many have sinned, for as many as have sinned without the law shall also perish without law. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. For not the hearers of the law are just before the Most High, but before the doers. No, that's not it. Verse 14, here's the point. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves, right? So, and you Christians would use this scripture because you see Gentiles and be like, see, that's talking about anybody. No, the Gentile in this scripture. I wish they changed the definition, but it's, I, I thought I was supposed to say Helen. But either way, okay, the Gentile in the scripture is talking about, all right, the Israelite foreigner who didn't know that they were Israelites, man, okay, because they was practicing the, the law. I mean, it's like you're practicing the way of the heathen, all right, but certain things they were doing, all right, which is, comes from the law, but they didn't know that was actually a law, man. For an example, all right, the law of circumcision, man. All right, a good majority of our people, okay, you know, they circumcise their sons, not realizing that that's a law in the in the scriptures, man. All right, eating your meat, all right, well done, man. Okay, majority of our people, you know, practice that, uh, you know, that law, not knowing that's a law, man. So it was just little things, little nuances like that. That we can, you know, use to prove that they're an Israelite, no matter how they look, man. All right? So that's just an example I wanted to bring out for that. But at the end of the day, your spirit is what determines that you're an Israelite or not. All right? Because, like I said, that whole speech he tried to use as saying, you know, if, if a the slave master slept with you, slept with your woman, and you brought four seeds, now, now, now we're all everybody that was in slavery. Now we all have white blood in us. That's bullshit. Okay, you can't you can't sit there and, and use that because the scriptures tell you that they speak not according to this word, man. And the scriptures break down on how the lineage is passed, man. Okay, because like I said, at the end of the day, all right, you are an Israelite by your by your seed line, man. Okay, by the seed of your father. If you're a so-called white man whose whose line goes back to an Edomite, then there's no hope for you, man. Okay? Because all even though you slept with so-called black women, all right, you bring you brought forth black children, that's not gonna uh uh create a loophole for you, man. All right? Okay, cause the Lord, 
All right, he's about to come and sort out all that confusion soon come. Okay? Because, yeah, there, there, there are Edomites that are amongst us right now that look like so-called black men, black women. But spiritually, they go back to Edomites, man. All right? Like I said, the example you have of, of Bill Clinton's illegitimate son, he looks like a so-called black man, but he is the seed of Bill Clinton, who was an Edomite, man. All right, Tia, uh, Tamara, and Taj Mowry, man. All right, from the, uh, the the Disney show Sister, Sister, and Smart Guy. They look like so-called black men, but they see goes back to Esau, man. Amal uh, Amalekite, uh, Amalekites, man. Okay, so it goes to show you, man, it's not about skin color, man. All right, so there's no such thing as no damn mixed seed. All right, if your father is an Israelite and your mother is a heathen, you are an Israelite because your father was one, all right? But if your mother is a is an Israelite and your father is a heathen, then you are not an Israelite. You are a heathen, man, all right? But see, Esau has, has came with all this confusion, all right, because he has introduced the concept of skin color to try to help, you know, a uh, 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 make his case to where he, he can pretty much, you know, try to make that loophole, man. Okay. But this is going to, uh, description I'm about to bring guys going to kill all that, man. All right. This is the book of Matthew, uh, Matthew 13 and 24. And it reads another parable put he forth unto them saying the children of it's like the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and so tears among the wheat, and he went and went his way. All right. Now, when you go into wheat and tares, man, okay, a tares look just like the wheat, and that's ultimately what Esau did, okay, when he began to spread himself in the world. All right, he he spread his seed amongst all the nations, but specifically amongst Israelites, okay, to where. He, you got so-called, uh, what, what you will call chocolate Edomites here, man. All right. That look like the uh, so-called black, uh, you know, men and women. All right. We just going to deal with, with the Israelites. Not, not, we don't give a damn about the heathen, man. All right. Cause you got, Ed, you got Edomites that, that look like so-called Chinese, Arab on down. But we're going to deal strictly with the tribes, man. Okay. So it's, it's Edomites out here who have laid down with so-called Negro, Latino, Native American women and brought forth so-called Negro, Latino, and Native American children, but, sp but spiritually they still are Edomites, man. Okay? So verse 26, And when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then Half it tears, and he said unto them, An enemy have done this. The servant said unto him, Will thou then that we go and gather them up? And he said, Nay, lest while you gather up the tares, you root up also the wheat with them. Right. So we, all right, in this flesh, cannot you know determine who all the way is you know uh, uh Israelite foreigners and who are heathen, man. Okay, we have a good idea, but ultimately, man, it's going to be the angel that's going to come back and sort that out, man. Okay, we have, we, like I said, we can have a good idea, you know, guys like Larry Bird, all right, Leonardo DiCaprio, Robert De Niro, all right, Bruce Lee, okay, Bob Marley, because they, they try to say Bob Marley is an Edomite because his dad looks like a so-called white man, but hey, Bob Marley's a Jake, man, all right, for you idiots out there. OK, but at the end of the day, man, you know, we're, we speculate on these, uh, you know, these guys that we that we uh, have a good idea that are Israelites, man. But at the end of the day, the angels are going to sow all that out, man. OK, verse 30. Let both go together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, go ye together first Gather ye together first the tares and bind them in bundles and burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. All right. So I'm going to jump down to verse 38. All right. As it says, the, the tares explain, so it's going to break it down. 
All right. So actually, I'm going to start at verse 36. It says, Then Yahweh sent the multitude away and went into the house, and the disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. And he answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the son of man, all right, which is Yahweh All right, and that seed that's being sown, all right, is this truth, man, okay? Because as I read earlier, I believe that was what Isaiah, um, what was that? Isaiah, was that 59? No, Isaiah 10 and 22, about how a, a remnant is going to return, man. Okay? Because at the end of the day, okay, this truth was only given unto the, unto the Israelites, but specifically only to the elect, man. All right? So, like, as I said, verse 37, he said unto them, he that sowed the good seed is the son of man, which is Yahweh Shah. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. But the tares are the children of the wicked ones. So ultimately, all right, that good seed is the Israelites altogether. But like I said, starting with the elect on this side, okay? And the tares are the children of the wicked one, which is the Edomites, man, okay? It says, the enemy that sold them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels, right? So, in the end times, man, all right, when, when Yahweh Shai and the angels return, okay, that's when everything will be sorted out, man, all right? But we we can't go through and, and determine who is the Israelite and who is not for sure, okay? Because if we did that, man, we, we might, you know, uh, uh, we might put some, you know, Jake that we thought was heathen to death, man, all right? But that's that's gonna be your how about Shem Yahweh Shai's job at the end of the day, man. All right, because at the end of the, at the main point being, look, there's no there's no hope for Esau, man. Because at the end of the day, the scriptures say that the promise is only to the Israelites, man. That never changed, man. All right. Matter of fact, we got one more precept before I get that. This is the book of Psalm 94 and 14. It says, For the Lord will not cast off his people, neither will he forsake his inheritance. Right, because you had that idiot talk about, you know, how how is God going to pretty much, you know, uh, how is the Most High going to, you know, determine, okay, who uh, who has the, 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 white, the white blood in him? But the, the black body, whatever the hell he said, man, which is bullshit. Because at the end of the day, the Lord knows who is his and who's not. All right? And the Lord said he was not going to cast off his people. So that promise is still only, you know, uh, dealing with the Israelites, man. Okay? It says, neither will he forsake his inheritance, man. All right? As the Lord is never, is not, he, he's never going to do away with his people. Now, two-thirds are going to be destroyed over on this side, man. But they're going to come back in the kingdom, okay? They're still Israelite, even though they're going to be put to death on this side, man. All right? Let's look at another precept. This is the book of Sirach 47 and 22. It says, But the Lord will never leave off his mercy, neither shall any of his works perish. Neither will he abolish the pos the posterity of his elect, and the seed of him that loveth him he will not take away. Wherefore he gave a remnant unto Jacob, and out of him a root unto David. It says posterity. I'm curious. Let me, just, let me see what this says. I'm going to go into the GNT. All right, Sirach 47 and 22 in the GNT. It says, But the Lord will always be merciful and keep all his promises. He will never destroy the descendants of David, whom he chose and who loved him, 
So for Israel's sake, he allowed David's family to survive, right? Because at the end of the day, man, David, all right, he was an Israelite, man, okay? And the posterity, all right, which, as I said, the the, uh, the seed line, all right, that generation, okay, was never going to, you know, uh, pretty much be done away with, man, all right? So it said, the Lord gave a remnant unto Jacob. Oh, actually, I'm going to read the whole thing again. It says, but the Lord will never leave off his mercy, neither shall any of his works perish, man. Because they, those, you know, uh, those things I read earlier about the sun still being in play, all right, the moon and the stars, okay? Those are the tokens that let us know that Yahweh Bashim was shy is still dealing with Israel, man, okay? Neither will he abolish the posterity of his elect and the seed of him that loveth him will he not take away. So that, that proves or that disproves that whole replacement theology, man, that universalism. No, man, the Lord never opened up his covenant unto any other nation. OK, it says, wherefore, he gave a remnant unto Jacob and out of him a root unto David, because ultimately hey, when through David's lineage, all right, Yahweh came forward. All right who pretty much opened up the mercy to be given unto all Israel again, man. All right? And that's why when the Lord returns this last time, all right, going back, those that you're seeing delivered are all going to be from the lineage of Israel, man. This is Revelation 7 and 4. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed 144,000 of all the tribes of Israel. It's like the tribes of the children of Israel. Of the tribe of Judah were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Reuben were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Gad were sealed 12,000. On the tribe of Asher were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Nathalem were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Manasseh were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Simeon were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Levi were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Issachar were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of, of Zebulon were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Joseph, who is, uh, you can interchange with Ephraim, were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Benjamin were sealed 12,000. Now, here's another loophole that these Christians will try to use. Because as the title says, the multitude from the tribulation. It says, after this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no men can number, of all nations and kindreds and peoples, and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. So they'll, so they'll see this and say, look, so the Lord is going to deliver people of all nations and kindreds and people, okay? But when you go into this word kindreds, or kindreds, It's G fifty four forty two Philly. It says in the New Testament, all the persons descending from one of the twelve sons of the patriarch Jacob. Everyone that you see and delivered, all right, whether they look like a so called African, so called white man, so called Chinese, East Indian, Hawaiian, whatever, okay, if they're being delivered. Their seed line goes back to one of the twelve patriarchs of Jacob, so that seed that seed line is, is still pure, all right. Which shows you that only Israel can be delivered, man. Salvation is only for Israel, all right. So you Christians, hey, amen. You're 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 pretty much you know out of here with this whole thing of trying to save Esau, man. Esau, his hey, all his hope is fucked. I'm gonna just keep it as plain as possible, man. All right. Hebrews 12 and 16. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. And that birthright was the promises that are now given to Israel. He sold that to Jacob for some damn potage meat, man. All right. For some uncooked meat. Okay. Because he, he said it himself, man. All right, let's get that real quick.
All right, this is Genesis 25 and 29. It says, And Jacob saw pottage, and Esau came from the field, and he was faint. And Esau said unto Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. And Jacob said, Sell me this day thy birthright. And Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to die. And what profit shall this birthright do to me? Okay. It says, And Jacob said, Swear unto me this day. And he swore unto him, and he sold his birthright unto Jacob. So they had a lawful agreement that was already, you know, uh, in the spirit, you know, preordained to happen. All right, because Yahweh Shem Yahweh had already chosen Jacob to be that, that uh, the progenitor of that chosen line of righteousness, man. All right. But they had a lawful agreement because Esau said that he didn't, you know, he didn't have any use for that birthright, man. All right. Not realizing that he was condemning his future descendants on down the line, man. All right. So going back. Hebrews 12 and 16, lest there be any uh, fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For ye know that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears, man. So this dude is through. There's no loophole for the so-called white man, man. He's finished. As it tells you in the Zondervan uh, Compact Bible Dictionary, Esau was the only nation not promised mercy from Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, man. We read it. All right. Romans 9 and in Malachi 1 and 4, man. Jacob have I loved and Esau have I hated, man. So the Most High is going to destroy Esau, man. Okay. So there's no saving this man. All right. So cut it out with all this, all this BS, man. All right. This man is through. Okay. Him and his descendants are finished, man. I'm going to end with this. This is Psalms 119 and 155. Salvation is far from the wicked, for they have not seen thy statues. Okay? Salvation is far from the wicked, man. All right? Matter of fact, let me get one more. Jeremiah 3.23 Truly in vain is salvation hope for from the hills and from the multitude of mountains. Truly in the Lord our power is salvation of Israel. Clear to the point. All right. Salvation is not promised to no other nation, especially not Esau, the wicked. Salvation is only promised to Israelites, man. Okay. And that's just the point, man. So that shows you that, look. Esau, man, you're finished, man. And all you Jakes that are trying to, you know, save Esau, man, scriptures say you're going to be thrust through with him, man. Okay? There's no there's no mixed seed. Okay? There's no loophole for Esau to get in there, man. The Lord stated that, hey, the promises are only going to be for the Israelites, man, and the Israelites only. So with that, Lord willing, man, this lesson was edifying. Until next time, I want to give all honor, praise, and glory to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rokakwadash. Double honors to my apostles and elders of great millstone that taught me this truth and that rule well. And peace and salutation to the elect. Until next time, I say Shalom.